بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household, all his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To bless them all and to bless every single one of us Ameen After having heard the young sheikh speak I told him I'm trembling to get up Mashallah, he did quite well. And I see whoever marries him, Mashallah, will be absolutely spoiled, Mashallah. <laughs> what he doesn't realize is he'll have to be a multi-millionaire <laughs> to fulfill what he said. But I think with the years of wisdom, Inshallah, he might, not to say change his mind, <laughs> but by the will of Allah, work harder to earn. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This evening I want to speak about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's attitude towards children as well as women and it's important for us to know that no matter how many times we cover this the repetition of it will definitely help us the Quran says wa dhakkir fa inna dhikra tanfa'ul mu'minin and remind for indeed the reminding benefits those who truly believe what this means is if you're a true believer you won't become upset when people remind you if you're a true believer you will be happy when people remind you and continue reminding you don't become angry and upset to say i've already heard this who are you why are you saying this a true believer thanks the person who reminds them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats the reminder of salah and zakah Even those who are the most regular with their salah have to read those verses. They have to continue. They have to repeat the verses. They will receive a reward for repeating the verses, for learning the meanings, for adopting, for putting into practice and then conveying to others. A great reward is achieved. So this is why it's important for us to go through topics that we have been through in the past. Perhaps we may discuss a slightly different angle. Perhaps we may bring a point or two that might affect us because as we pass through our lives what happens is we've heard reminders that have been relevant but because we haven't gone through those items sometimes we don't realize the value when we hear it again we think to ourselves this is pertinent to me right here right now so if you take a look at muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will realize that He had sons who had passed away in infancy and his daughters grew older but he lost all his children besides one Fatima bint Muhammad radhiyallahu anha and sallallahu alayhi wasallam he she lived a little bit longer than he did so he buried his children sallallahu alayhi wasallam something really great in terms of learning endurance and sabr It is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sabr that we draw from yet he was the most beloved of all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he went through it all so when he had his children how did he treat them when he had his grandchildren how did he treat them remember many of us are impatient when we are young we are quite impatient when things happen against our own will what happens we become people who cannot tolerate others We can we become people who do not have the time for other people. We are people who don't want to be told anything. But as you have children, that alone is rehabilitation for you if you needed it. And to say the least, it reforms a person, transforms them to become better by the will of Allah. The fact that you have children, you become so lenient, you become peep, you become a person who can now tolerate something you didn't tolerate a little while back if the children of others engage in mischief we are quick to get upset and angry wait until you have your own would you allow someone else to become 
as upset with your children? The answer is no. We won't want it. Imagine your child is the most mischievous child. May Allah protect us all from mischief and our children as well. I mean, note how I worded that, mashallah. <laughs> and so, if you have a very mischievous child at the back of the masjid making a loud noise, would you like someone to admonish them, scold them, yell at them, even though they were wrong? You would perhaps go to them and say, hey, leave my son alone, right? Or you might say, speak to him correctly, with respect. Don't talk to him that way. When we were young, we were clouted by uncles we didn't know. Because we were playing games while Taraweeh was going on. Does it ring a bell? <laughs> Mashallah, see all the men laughing because they know when they were kids. <laughs> you know the Taraweeh was so long, we used to sit at the back and we used to do all sorts of things. And here comes an uncle, not only does he, he can't scream because people will know his voice, but he clips you and he's gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. And then you're telling your dad, I think it's that uncle. And dad says, are you sure? Because he's worried. The guy looks like a big rugby player. He says, no, no, maybe it's that one. Okay, you don't know exactly who it is. Next time, you better figure it out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We become so irritant when people admonish our children. The reality is, as Muslimin, we all have the right to admonish one another's children. But within limits and with respect. Remember this. Speak to them, address them, treat them as though they were your own children. And parents, don't feel bad when someone has corrected your child if it was done correctly with respect and in a good way. And if your child was definitely wrong. Sometimes with us, we send our children to a madrasa, to a school, to study the Quran, to study Islamic studies or any other education. And what we find is when the teacher happens to correct the child, admonish them a little bit hard. They are a little bit harsh. They punish them perhaps with detention or something else, or they have to stand in the naughty corner. Perhaps we become agitated, angry. What did you do to my child? Who are you? I'll get you fired. Do you know who I am? Have you heard that statement before? People lose track of their own identity. They've got to ask the question. Do you know who I am? <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And, and then we become upset, agitated, not realizing the discipline offered by that educator. Perhaps you have lost in that regard. Perhaps you have not provided that in your home. So Allah gave it to you in another way. That having been said, we who are educators, be careful. Do not overburden the child. Do not over penalize a child. It is haram. We don't know of a single hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, because he was teaching someone, the adults or the children, the Quran, that he started clipping them, smacking them, clapping them up, whacking them and so on. Those are the words that are synonymous with what? Becoming a hafir, right? They say, and I know, I was told this as well, if you're not going to get licks, you won't be a good hafir. That's not true. Take a look at the Hufad of the time of Muhammad ﷺ, how many of them received it? Not one, not even one. But then you might argue they were dedicated. So encourage your children to be dedicated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Yes, it doesn't mean you must become so friendly that there's no respect. We are friends, but with limits. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us. These are children. They are an amana. Ask those who don't have children how depressing it becomes when people say, well, it's about time you start having kids. And the sister says, it's like... Like it was in my hands, you know. We've been trying for so long and we don't have children. May Allah bless you with children. <laughs> Ask those who don't have children the value of the children. And when we have children, they are an amana, a trust. Entrusted to us, Allah can take them away at any time. They belong to Him, not to you. They are temporarily given to you to enjoy to be able to earn paradise through them. How? By giving them a good upbringing. Look at the hadith which speaks about daughters. A person who has two, three, four daughters looks after them and is happy that Allah has chosen daughters for him and gets them married after giving them a good upbringing to decent people. Allah says, for you is Jannah. You actually prepared mothers of the ummah and you actually prepared people who were not going to live with you. They were going to live with others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants Jannah to those who've looked after these daughters. Why? Because they belong to Allah. All you did was fulfill the duty on your shoulders. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept such a beautiful link that you felt the love. Because the birth... 
to that child was given through you and perhaps and obviously your spouse. Subhanallah. So this amana, Allah can take it away. Infancy, childhood, teenage, adolescent, later on, before marriage, after marriage, before having children, after having had children, before you, after you. Allah chooses what He wants. You have to be happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why when someone passes away, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are confirming that, look, this person's taken away. They've returned to Allah. We all belong to Allah and we shall all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we're saying. But let's say it with a heart of understanding. And let's realize this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has taken these people away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept death as a lesson for those who are alive to say you are also going. You are the child of someone. Have you made dua for your parents? Those who've passed away, have you sat and made dua for them? Have you asked Allah to grant them forgiveness and jannah? It's part and parcel of your duty towards your folks, your parents, your family members. The same applies if you've lost children. Remember the sabr that you bear upon losing a child will be your ticket to paradise by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as the child is born, you find the first thing that happens, and I'm going to move in this order because I'd like to let this talk be of benefit to us all. We need to develop a lot of sabr. That sabr already starts the day you get married. Why? Two totally different people have got together. They love each other. They will begin to love each other much more as they get together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they understand the rights that need to be fulfilled. When I say totally different, the faith will be the same. The level upon which they are might differ slightly here and there. We are taught to try and marry someone who's on a similar religious level. When someone has proposed to marry your daughter and you are satisfied with their level of deen and khuluq, with their level of religiousness and the level of character and conduct, do not deny them. Let them get married. This is what the hadith says. So once they are married, subhanallah, one was brought up in, an, in a home totally separately from the other. Those who are cousins perhaps, and they've been brought up together, they will tell you, I can't marry this cousin of mine. She's my sister. We grew up together. You can understand what they're saying, although they're not real sisters or brothers. But at the same time, those who've been brought up apart, Allah's made it such that you are more attracted to each other. There is a possibility of you being more attracted to each other. But get married and you realize every single one of us will realize that there are differences that you need to adjust in order to be able to appreciate. You will never be able to lead a happy married life if you don't adjust. And that adjustment comes with a lot of humbleness. The men cannot say, I'm the man, you adjust, that's it. She's adjusted so much. She's quit the parents that she had in the sense, the home that she was brought up in, her parents, her friends, her surroundings, her brothers and sisters. She left absolutely everything to come and live with you in most cases. And what happened? You're telling her, you still need to adjust. I'm not going to change. It's a give and take. Don't compromise the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't compromise your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what you will have to compromise is a lot of other things. She might be a person who loves to sleep, mashallah. <laughs> well, allow her a little bit more sleep than you because you are satisfied with four hours of sleep, six hours of sleep. She's one of those, mashallah, 10 hours, alhamdulillah. Here to London, she's asleep most of the time, alhamdulillah. She gets up when the flight is landing. Wow, lucky woman, alhamdulillah. You need to adjust to it. You need to talk about it. If that's the way she grew up, you cannot think for a moment that she is going to change that overnight. Yes, when it comes to Salatul Fajr, you have every right to get them up. Not by slapping, smacking, whipping, never ever. But gently reminding, because if it was you, you wouldn't want that type of a reminder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And this is why adjustment is absolutely important. It is the training before you get your children. Learn to adjust. Learn to appreciate the differences. Not every woman will be a top cook. Like Sheikh Muhsin said moments ago, you do the cooking. Subhanallah. <laughs> then see if anyone eats that food. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He grant us to the understanding of the sunnah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to assist in the homes with the chores of the house. 
He used to milk the goats himself, bring forth the milk. He used to help clean the home, not to say it was dirty, astaghfirullah, but to dust it and to make sure that the bedding is in order and everything else is in order. How many of us are so lazy? You just get married and that's it. After that, you've got an unpaid maid to work, astaghfirullah. Especially if you're living with your mom and dad, they think, oh, now we've got a new maid. You know, Margaret's come in the home and that's it. <laughs> May Allah forgive that type of thinking. May we change. She who has come into your home is not there in order to act as an unpaid maid. No, not at all. Yes, she will serve. She will serve dedicatedly. She will, and I'm speaking from experience. A wife doesn't mind serving on condition that she is appreciated. That's it. That's all. A little thank you. Jazakumullah khair. A good dua. Mashallah. Wonderful food. What a lovely meal and so on. That's all she wants. To be honest with you, not more than that. The problem is we live with people sometimes who don't appreciate. Not at all. In fact, they will pick on one thing that went wrong and they will ignore a thousand sacrifices that this woman has made in the home. We too, we ignore them. She's made so many sacrifices, morning to evening. Perhaps the schools, the school run as we call it. Some of us, mashallah, we do it ourselves. Some of us are fortunate to have drivers to do that. But others... Or in the majority of cases, who does it? Let's be honest. It's not an easy task. It's quite difficult. Do we appreciate it? This is just one point. So many other things. We come to the house, everything is in order. This having been said, my beloved sisters, let's fight laziness. Laziness is one of the biggest destroyers of marriages. Did you know that? People who are lazy. Lazy. They become an irritation after a little while. People don't want to see their faces because they're so lazy. May Allah protect us all, men and women, from laziness. Even the Prophet ﷺ, who was free of laziness, he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kasal. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from laziness. Subhanallah. Thereafter, as you grow a little bit, you will have, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the urge to have children. And then you have children, your wife is expecting. What happens if Allah wanted? It could have been a smooth sail, nine months and there you are. The child is there and it's over. But Allah chose, as He says in the Quran, In another place, Both these verses speak of what type of pregnancy what type of gestation period the woman goes through? Number one, it is imposed on her in the sense that it's Allah who has chosen that this child will be produced or you will have reproduction of man in a specific way. That's Allah who chose it. And then the other verse depicts the pain, the difficulty that the mother goes through. Difficulty. Why wasn't it easy? Allah wants you to achieve reward and Allah wants the male to acknowledge that. And Allah wants the male to live with it, to adjust, to begin to adjust from now. Because when the child is born, wait and see what happens. So subhana rabbi al-a'la, what a great Lord we have, what a great creator we have. So she, after a few months, a month or two perhaps, sometimes three months, or in the early stages, I'm sure you've heard of morning sickness. Why does it happen? I'm sure you've heard of irritations, pains, sometimes different types of distress. It becomes medical sometimes. Loss of hair, what else? So many other things. Now we require supplements. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good health. I mean, as men, do we just sit back, relax and say, yeah, that's it. Good. We're going to be having a child excited, telling the whole world. Nowadays, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything buzzing. But your, your wife is suffering, struggling. Have you ever sat with her and offered her, as Sheikh Muhsin has advised, a little personalized homemade spa? Mashallah. We might not be able to afford those you know, big things as he was saying. But Alhamdulillah, you can try. Once in your life, as he said, twice, thrice perhaps. Look, we're taking cue from one of our seniors, Alhamdulillah. It's very important. And then the interest that should be shown by the male is such that the woman feels proud to have had your child. Subhanallah. The interest. I'm so happy. Uh, some men become upset when they hear that the wife is pregnant. Who's going to pay the school fees? Relax. Take it easy. 
Who told you to do this? What do you mean who told you to do this? <laughs> it was you, man. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Never become upset upon that news. No matter how it comes to you, be happy. Smile. Say Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. MashaAllah. It's a miracle, Wallahi. People are crying to have children. Here you are. Your wife is pregnant and you're upset. Astaghfirullah. May Allah make it easy. So as the days pass, say good words. Stop screaming and yelling. The child hears you. Did you know that? The child hears you. Learn to recite the Quran. Learn to say good words. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Learn to speak in a sweet manner. The child is affected by the emotions of the mother. Did you know that? The child is affected, affected by what the mother goes through. Absolutely everything. From the very beginning. Subhanallah. This is why when they speak about Islamic education or education, we believe it starts in the womb. When you have a soothing recitation that the mother listens to in the womb all the time, when the child is born, they will incline towards such a recitation. They will achieve the coolness, the, the, the calmness, the calming effect by the same recitation. Where did it come from? It came from the mother. It came from what they heard, perhaps the father. But if you were yelling and screaming all the time, as soon as the child is born, <laughs> have you heard that? MashaAllah. Where did it come from? Dad. <laughs> Okay, okay, that was just on a lighter note, mashallah. But subhanallah, this attitude of screaming, yelling, shouting, become humble, become responsible from before the birth of your child. I'm, I must be responsible. Come home early. Don't leave your spouse, you know, on bed or in the bed struggling, suffering with this child of yours. And you're busy sitting and chatting with your friends, you know. They have shisha lounges here and there. And people are just sitting. Oh, my wife is expecting. But it's 12. <laughs> you should have been the one expecting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. <laughs> we as a family are expecting by the will of Allah. This is what it is. Are you responsible? Do you show that enthusiasm? When you enter the room, do you smile? You will obviously see a female who doesn't look too delighted. Not because she's not happy. She's excited. She's worried at the same time. It is a big concern. It's quite stressful to be pregnant, especially when you hear stories of how people have struggled and suffered and the child is growing in you. So you don't expect her to be all smiles every single day. She might be a little bit down some days. You will have to come in. You will have to say words that will encourage her. You will have to say words that will boost her, that will make her smile against all odds. Where are you? Where is that ibadah? The Prophet ﷺ used to make his wives blush. And smile and laugh. Where are we from those sunan of Muhammad sallallahu when we claim to be champions of the sunnah and the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What type of a champion is this? Thereafter, please remember, when the days are drawing near, it is important for you to make yourself available. One of the biggest gifts you can give your wife is to be there for her. In the last moments to show concern to make dua many of us in our excitement wallahi we forget to call out to Allah wallahi in our excitement we forget to thank Allah we forget to call out to Allah so make yourself available try and be there to, to give her that moral support most women that's all they want and then the child is born never ever ever Say, ah, oh, the child is a girl, I wanted a boy. Astaghfirullah. Or the child's a boy, I wanted a girl. That is the most hurtful statement and it is haram. Prohibited. Allah has chosen and it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn to understand this. Allah knows what's better for you. Lillahi mulku samawati wal To Allah belongs the kingdom, the ownership of whatever is in the skies and the earth. يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ He creates whatever he wishes. يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا He grants whomsoever he wishes only females. وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورُ And he grants whomsoever he wishes only males in terms of children. وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا Whomsoever he wishes. He 
makes them unable to bear children, barren as it were. Allah says, Oh, He gives them both, male and female. And thereafter, He says, Oh, He keeps them barren. The woman is barren, or the man is unable. For example, his reproductive system, or the sperm count is too low. That's all in Allah's hands. You may seek medication. It is an act of worship to seek medication within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I repeat that. It is an act of worship to seek medication within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling out to Allah to help. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. So when the child is born, everyone's excited. Everyone is so excited and mashallah, here's the child. Let's not go into the naming. But at least keep a good name. A name that has a good meaning. And a name that is easy to pronounce. Especially living in a, in a country where we do not speak Arabic as a mother tongue. If you have a sophisticated name, who's going to pronounce it correctly? So have a decent, simple name. Something that has a good meaning and easy to pronounce. And at the same time, stay away from those names that have a good sound, but they mean nothing. They sound very nice, but they mean absolutely nothing. May Allah bless us. You are, your, that child is going to be called with a name that you have chosen for the child on the day of judgment, the same name. Subhanallah. So it's something very sacred, really sacred. Choose something good. Thereafter, there is excitement and people come in and mashallah, the gifts start rolling in, mashallah. You know, that's good in a way because you look forward to the next child. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. The gifts start rolling in. But those gifts won't help you when the sleepless nights begin. <laughs> subhanallah. Colic. Hey, what to do? Let's run to the doctor. Doctor says, that's normal. What? Normal? Oh no. I'm going into the next room. Well done, father. That's why heaven is at the feet of the mothers. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us, really. Is that how you treated your child? Okay, it's understood if you had a very important meeting. Some of the mothers are very understanding. They said, you know what? We don't want this to disturb. Well, why don't you take turns? Subhanallah. Say, look, first six hours, you look after the child. After that, I will. As it is, you are going to be awake. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. Take turns. Is there anything wrong with that? Not at all. It's an act of worship. That child is yours. The child will grow up, subhanallah. And the child will know, dad looked after me, mom looked after me. I was a blessed child, loved by both parents, subhanallah. This is a balanced upbringing from the very beginning. Take your child. Some fathers do not want to carry the child. Not even, no, not at all. What type of tyrants are those? Astaghfirullah. Even the Pharaoh was fond of kids. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So as the child grows, remember that crying at night is in order to stretch the level of sabr that you have. Stretch you because the child will cry. What can you do? You cannot bash the child because that's your own child. Ask the mothers. Some of them will tell you, I feel like whatever. But tell them, okay, let me do it for you. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> It's a reality. They'll tell you, I feel like this and I feel... It's just a little feeling. It's not reality. It's their desperation to keep the child quiet. And then as the child grows, and mashallah, you're now moving with the child, growing, you know, and the first few words the child utters, there's excitement, there's a lot of joy, but there's great sacrifice because here come the cold season. And what happens? The child starts suffering a little bit. It's quite normal. It happens. And you have a bit of an, perhaps, a respiratory problem, a light one, you know, a little flu, a little cough, Slight nasals, a bit of asthma here and there. You need to run to the doctor. All this is part and parcel of your duty unto your children. You need to make sure. And Allah is showing you, you were equally helpless at one stage. Someone looked after you, you now grew up. Are you going to do it for the rest? This is what life is all about. Subhanallah. Where are the fathers who are impatient with their children? Totally impatient. I don't want to hear. When I come home, no screaming, no shouting, no yelling. Oh, you're in trouble. Your marriage will be broken. Astaghfirullah. What type of trouble is that? If that was the case between your mom and dad, they would have never survived. You probably yelled more than anyone else. May Allah forgive us. So my brothers and sisters, 
Let's understand as time passes, you know, you're traveling with the child and the child begins to yell in the middle of the airport, the middle of the mall, the middle. That's just your test. Do you get angry, agitated, upset? You want to beat the child? Not at all. Ignore it. Children cry, but not par parents are not meant to be yelling. That's what it is. Children will scream. I recall I was flying on an aircraft and there was a child screaming top of the child's voice. And the mother is busy trying to keep the child, you know, keep the child quiet. And it's the lights are off. Everyone is trying to sleep and so on. And I got up and I had to say something because people were giving her the dirty looks, you know, like, ah, but you can't do anything. And I said, you know what? Don't worry. Let this child yell, scream. I've got seven of them. I know what it's all about. <laughs> Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Let them scream. Let them yell. People will hold against you your reaction, but will not hold against the child the crying. The crying will be forgotten. You land and everything and the crying is forgotten. But how you smacked up the child to make it yell even more or gagged its mouth and almost choked it, the whole world will remember that. It will be on Instagram and Facebook and trust me, Twitter and everywhere. And they might have a, a, a secret picture of you also. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. This is what the world does. So remember how to react. Take it easy. Relax. Calm. When you are calm, the child becomes calm. If the child is screaming, yelling, pretend like nothing is going on and carry on with the child. People look at you. A few might think you're mad. Those who have children, 100% of them will know and appreciate. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was in sujood one day. And he prolonged his sujood. The sahaba radiallahu anhum were worried. Do you know what happened? They realized that his grandchildren were playing on his back when he was in sujood, so he couldn't get up because perhaps they might have fallen down and got hurt. I think the imam would be fired if that happened in our masjid. <laughs> it's a reality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. The example is being drawn not so that we purposely do that, but in order to show us the value of these children. The patience required. I'm reading Salah. The child's on my back. How did it happen? Did he get angry? How did you allow these children here? What happened? No. It was encouraged. These are little boys. Al-Hasan wal Hussein, Radiyallahu anhumah. Subhanallah. They are supposed to be encouraged to come to the masajid. Yes, that was a little bit too early. But they came in. Subhanallah. And they were playing. And as they were playing, they were on his back. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There couldn't have been a better place to play. Subhanallah. What an honor. And he delayed, meaning he took longer in sujood. This shows us the patience of Muhammad sallallahu with children. He used to take a moment to greet the children, to give them so much of importance because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Today we ignore the kids. We ignore them completely in most cases. How many of us would greet children? Well, we don't even greet the adults, let alone the children. But you greet a child, Salaamu Alaikum. Wallahi, the child will learn from you. The child will respect you. The child will understand this is what I'm supposed to be doing. The child matures quick because he's got relation with adults. A good one. You talk to the child. What's your name? Mashallah, mashallah. And don't raise problems all the time. We only are interested in children who might be a little bit mischievous. And so what we do is we start saying, hey, stop doing this. Tomorrow you better not bring your phone here to this masjid. Do you understand? Sorry, not you. I don't mean you. <laughs> but what I mean, subhanallah, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed blessed us. Speak good. But mashallah, how old are you? Alhamdulillah. And walk away. You don't need to start, you know, extracting information from children as some people do. Hey, come here. You know, your mom and dad are fighting. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, they are. So who shouts louder? Mom or dad? And the poor child will say, Mom <laughs> or dad, whatever, you know. That is haram. It is haram to extract information regarding what's going on behind closed doors from children. It's dirty. It's prohibited. You're not allowed to do that. And some people say, no, children tell the truth. Not always. I know little kids who actually lie. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us.
Let's learn to develop our character. This is all taught by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Did you know that? But with us, we pick and choose what we want to label sunnah is sunnah. What doesn't suit us, hey, it's by the way. No way. He treated his wives in such a beautiful way. Subhanallah. His children, he gave them so much of importance. He participated in their lives before marriage, after marriage, in such a beautiful way. Subhanallah. This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is why I say the treatment of children, the treatment of women is so important. It actually becomes our contribution to the future, to the next generation, to the development of the nation. Subhanallah. This ummah requires people who love one another. It will only start when you love, when the love starts in your own home. And that love needs to be shown. It needs to be displayed. Nowadays, it needs to be said a lot as well. You need to tell your children you love them. I give you another example from the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ was with one of his grandchildren and he kissed him. So Al-Aqra ibn Habis was sitting nearby. He says, you're kissing your grandchild. I've got 10 of them. I haven't ever kissed any one of them. The Prophet ﷺ looks at him and says, Man la yarham la yurham. Done. Whoever doesn't have mercy, will not be shown mercy over. What powerful words. What powerful words. To kiss your child is a sign of mercy. Don't be shy to embrace your child and to kiss your child and to tell your child, I love you. My son, my daughter. Tell them again and again. Even when admonishing them, tell them, look, I'm about to correct you. I'm about to rectify what you've done. It's wrong. Don't be mistaken. I love you with all I am. That's why I'm telling you so that you don't repeat this error. Speak to the child. Engage them in discussion. You don't just come and say, right, pull out the whip. Nowadays, they whip you back. Subhanallah. <laughs> Allah protect us. Really. Allah grant us goodness and ease. The children are quite, quite sophisticated today. They can fix you in so many different ways. One of the biggest ways is hiding your cell phone. <laughs> Allah forgive us. I recall an irritation that happened in one home because the child was perhaps admonished in a way that the child didn't like and next thing the cell phone disappeared of dad. And he's, he's really fuming. And he was so upset. And someone suggested to him, why don't you just offer a little gift to anyone who finds the phone, you know? And mashallah, it came out. It came out. It came out. Alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters, we can convert our homes into beautiful homes, full of love, full of goodness, but it requires a sacrifice. Without a sacrifice, you won't achieve it. You have a temper, work hard on that temper, cut it, eradicate it. Whenever you're about to boil, just say, I love you, mashallah. Make sure it's the right person, mashallah. <laughs> Whenever you're about to get upset, just keep yourself quiet. Follow the sunnah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Perhaps sit down. Perhaps drink a bit of water. So many remedies in the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're angry. And he says, whoever quenches their anger, quenching, meaning, you know, to suppress it, they will be granted a huge prize on the day of Qiyamah. Subhanallah. Special status on the day of judgment. For what? Just because I was about to get angry and I just suppressed it. Allah says, you deserve something. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May He grant us every form of goodness and ease. And as we develop, we see the children of others. Treat them with respect because others will treat your children with respect too. Don't look at the children of others and not be bothered. I'm not worried, not bothered. Let them do what they want. Subhanallah. You need to be concerned how many of us have made an effort on the children of other people. How many of us have made a dua for the children of other people. We can improve inshallah in that regard. Make dua for the children of the ummah, the people of the ummah, not just for yourself and your own children. Oh Allah, bless my children, bless, oh Allah, bless my children and the children of the ummah. Subhanallah. Oh Allah, bless my children and the homeless children of Syria and Iraq and Palestine and Afghanistan. Think about them. The situation can change anytime, anywhere. An earthquake can happen, anything can happen. And our world can turn upside down like the worlds of others have already been turned upside down. We don't want that to happen, so be thankful to Allah. Make dua for those who are struggling and suffering. Reach out to them in a beautiful way. Teach your children how to reach out to those who are struggling. With us, one big mistake we make, I love you actually in the minds of some people means, I'm just going to shower you with everything I can with my money. That's it. 
So we buy them an iPhone 6 at the age of 6. I promise you. And then when they turn 7, the iPhone 7 has not yet come out. You've got a big problem. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, really. The point I'm raising is, you don't show love by showering upon them that which is material that's going to be detrimental for their upbringing. Sometimes to keep it away would actually be more beneficial. And this doesn't mean that you just say, okay, you know, we're not allowed to give you, we're not going to give you. Because what may happen is they may see the others with a few games, perhaps some technology, perhaps something else. If it is permissible, if it is permissible from an Islamic perspective, then remember what is now required, if you can afford it, is to be able to control how much they use of it. So it's not like we're going to stop them completely. But we say, listen, you can take this for one hour a day, inshallah, and use it. And that too, it will be parental guidance, so to speak. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us discipline not only our children, but even ourselves. We require it. Many of us have children, but we still need guidance ourselves. We are not yet role models to those children of ours. So remember to pray for the children of others. I've mentioned just a few words. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to open our doors, to open the understanding that we have, to grant us every form of goodness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create ease in the homes of those who are struggling and suffering in any way. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant children to those who don't have children. May Allah make us from those who understand that the seerah and the sunnah is not something narrow. It's something that includes every aspect of our lives. Let's not just follow what suits us and leave what doesn't. Let's attempt to follow every aspect of it as best as we can. May Allah bless you all and may He bless the Ummah at large. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.